Today we're going to be doing an unboxing of a Sony notebook. This is a notebook that I picked up for a family member of mine, so it is uh, gets a Linus's Choice uh, seal of approval, especially at the price that NCIX had it at on their Black Friday sale where I work. So it has an Intel Core i3 370M, 4 gigs of RAM, a 500 gig drive. It is a 14 inch notebook with a DVD rewritable, as well as Windows 7 Home Premium. It is also a notebook in case there was any confusion about that. And this will be the reintroduction of my unboxing knife, the one that I lost when I was traveling because I left it on my keychain and tried to get on an airplane, which was stupid. Don't do that. So I have, I finally have my Spyderco knife back. Went and bought another one. And so I have broken the seal and I can put that away. Let's find out uh, about this notebook, because to be perfectly blunt with you guys, I don't know much about it. I bought it based on uh, one of my coworkers' recommendations who said, this one's a really good deal, it's on sale this week. Grab it, because I know you need a notebook right now. And, uh, oh, here we go. So here we have Sony's summary of the specs. So it's the i3 uh, 370M, that's a 2.4 gigahertz dual core processor, 14 inch display at 1366 by 768. In terms of graphics, we are using the Intel HD graphics, which will be just fine for my aunt. And uh, we have another seal to break, so I'm gonna pull out the knife again. And I wanna really have a close look at this notebook for you guys because uh, I wanna know what I got myself into here. What's the model of this one anyway? This is the Vio EA33FD. I probably should have mentioned that before. So in terms of packaging, we've got environmentally friendly cardboard packaging throughout the entire inside. So there's no foam as far as the eye can see. And uh, let's have a look at what's in here. Based on the weight, I would say it's probably the battery and it is. So we have the battery as well as the adapter. Very reasonable size adapter, not too heavy, which is nice if you're ever traveling around with your laptop. So we can go ahead and pull that out. Then we have the battery itself, which has a bit of a heft to Oh, that's a weird shaped battery, isn't it? Look at that. I wonder how many cells it is. Uh, here we go. It is a 3500 milliamp hour battery. So it runs at 11.1 .1 volts. I guess that's all the information we have at the moment. Let's see what we've got in terms of documentation. We have a cyber coupon of 20%. Quick start guide. Okay. And then we have the notebook itself. Oh, I found some foam. That's okay, I forgive them. So here's the uh, the piece that holds the laptop itself in. And then we can remove the laptop. So it's got a bit of a heft to it, but you expect that with a 14 inch unit. They're not quite what you'd consider a thin and light. And uh, hmm. honestly, structural rigidity doesn't come from nowhere. And Sony laptops by and large are pretty well built compared to some of the lower cost competitors. So. That's at least what I have come to expect from them, so I don't necessarily need it to be the lightest thing in the world. There we go, finally got that open. Okay. Sorry this is taking so long, guys. So there we go, I got the foam removed. I'm gonna go ahead and install the battery. Uh, the top is a bit of a fingerprint magnet already, but well, that's yet another thing that I've come to expect from pretty much every laptop manufacturer out there. No one seems to be able to quite figure out a fingerprint-proof finger coating. So as long as you don't mind wiping it down once in a while, it's not that big of a deal. Unless you're like a total, uh, total neat freak or whatever. Okay, so let's figure out how this goes in. Aha! So the battery installation is a little bit different from what I'm used to. It actually operates on a little hinge here, so you just slide the battery in like that. So it's simpler than I had originally thought. Now let's see if it comes with any charge on the battery whatsoever. Uh, my experience with recent notebooks has been that it generally does. So we've got a little screen protector here on the chiclet keyboard. Let's get this guy opened up. And uh, the hinge is actually quite nice. A lot of the time with laptop hinges, you can really tell if they're flimsily built, but this one seems to have a fair amount of resistance to it and it feels quite solid, even when you take it right to the ends and give it a little bit of a, of a push. It doesn't have any locks on it, so that means that it's gonna have to hold itself closed. You can see once you get close to the end, it'll finish it off for you and it holds itself shut quite nicely. But then when you give it a little bit of force, you can open it up very easily. Now in terms of the display, it looks like we're dealing with a glossy screen here, although it's not as bad as some of the glossy screens I've seen in terms of reflection. 
So here, maybe you can kind of get it at sort of a worst case scenario angle. You can see my hand reflecting off the screen. But really, it's not that bad, even though we're sitting in an office lighting right now, which is pretty much a worst case scenario. So language selection. I do have to set this up properly because it is for my aunt. So, uh, OK, it'll be configured with English. You cannot change the language at a later date. Are you sure you want to continue? OK. OK, so we've got one touch access to ViOCare, the web, and media gallery. So the assist button, that'll be good for her. And then we have the web button as well as the media gallery button. Let's have a look at the keyboard itself because that's one of the things that really sets, uh, sets one notebook apart from another for me is the overall layout of the keyboard. So all of the major keys are where I'd expect them. It is a bilingual layout. So you're going to find accent keys and all kinds of characters in pink all over the place. But they haven't made too many compromises that I'd be too unhappy with. If you have reasonable sized hands, you're going to be able to reach the backspace key quite easily. And you can also reach the enter key without too much hassle. The shift key is slightly shortened, but it's not in an unreasonable position. I've seen shortened shift keys that are like way over here, and it's just not comfortable to type on. The right shift key is not shortened, and you can reach it quite easily as well. We've got the sort of normal complement of F keys as well as uh, we've got British pounds. We've got a, yeah, we've got a whole bunch of different stuff here. Oh, cameraman wants to show the uh, all the different inputs and outputs. So here's our power. Here we've got uh, gigabit LAN. Then we have VGA as well as HDMI. I like this because you've got kind of the uh, the old standard and then the new standard, both supported by this particular laptop. We've got an eSATA USB combo port. I love those. Those are so cool. And then we've got an express card slot here. Moving around to the front of the notebook, we will find a... Oh, that's right. That's a memory stick slot. Then we will find an SD slot. I'm glad Sony is finally starting to support some of those industry standard standards rather than only their own. So SD is nice. We've got a wireless switch. I can pretty much guarantee I'm going to get a support call from her about that at some point when she accidentally turns it to off. And then uh, here we've got a headphone as well as a microphone jack. And then on the other side, uh, we've got three USB 2.0 ports as well as the DVD drive. Personally, I don't need a DVD drive for my laptop and I would go for something a little bit thinner, a little bit lighter in place of that. But for a lot of people, it is still essential. Uh, on the bottom, we have... Uh, hmm. Not a whole lot. We've got access to what appears to be memory upgrade as well as hard drive upgrade, but uh, that's about it. And realistically, on a modern notebook, that's about all you should be upgrading anyway. Oh, and there's a Kensington lock here that I missed before. But uh, yeah, I mean, on a, on a modern notebook, you're not going to be like upgrading the CPU and upgrading the graphics, so there's no real point having easy, easy access to the whole thing. Now, I'm just going to type this name while you look away, since I don't want everyone to necessarily know the name of my aunt. She doesn't need a password. I, I guess that's pretty much all I wanted to wanted to say overall. The touchpad is quite nice. It's one of those textured touchpads. So this is this part is smooth, and the chassis itself. Oh, that's that's actually really solid. The chassis itself has very little flex to it. I'm just going to mash the keyboard a little bit here. You know what? I, I should even almost take this off the table because the movement of the table is. Uh, really making it look like it has a lot more flex than it does. I'm just going to come right down to the floor and I want you guys to have a look at the keyboard and compare this to your keyboard at home. See how my knuckles are all going white? I'm putting a lot of pressure on this and there is no flex whatsoever in the keyboard itself. So that is how that is what really separates the men from the boys when you're talking the overall build quality of a laptop is how much the chassis gives when you take it and you try to flex it like this or when you try and push down on the keyboard. So that's it's not always all about specs and all about screen size. There's a lot that goes into designing a laptop. Uh, the touchpad, as I mentioned before, is textured. So it's one of those ones that's not going to get greasy and sticky if you're using it for a, an extended period of time. It has a left and right click button, as we PC users are accustomed to. And uh, like I said, I think that's pretty much all that I wanted to say about it. Thank you for checking out my unboxing of the Sony Vio, and I'm going to cheat here, uh, EA33FD and don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more tech videos, reviews, unboxings, and pretty much whatever else I feel like uploading to my channel.
As with most new notebooks, I should probably, yeah, I, one more thing, guys, sorry. As with most new notebooks, one of the first things you pretty much have to do is go through and uninstall a bunch of stuff. So the first thing that popped up when we got to the desktop was a battery health status meter, which is kind of useful, actually. And then I just want to show you guys exactly what comes pre-installed. So I'll probably remove AccuWeather. Uh, I'll remove ArcSoft, whatever those things are. I'll remove Evernote. Anything I don't recognize, I pretty much remove. Google Chrome, though, that's a good thing to have installed by default. I don't mind that at all. Bunch of Intel stuff, Java, this is all okay. Office 2010 trial, nice to see that comes on it gives you at least something to use while you decide uh, what route you want to go for office norton internet security i would probably remove uh, a lot of this a lot of this stuff i'd probably remove i mean if i had a ps3 this would be kind of cool i mean that's actually that's that's neat and then uh, what else do we have here so we've got a bunch more vio software vio care vio control center i'd probably nuke all of that although uh, before I do, I'll check and see if they're actually useful things that she'll use, and then I'll make a judgment call from there. So thank you for checking out the video. I'm actually done now. Sorry, guys.